name is Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today we're looking at the Jetway MA3 79GDG combo motherboard. What comes included with the motherboard is an IDE cable, IO panel shield plate, two serial ATA data cables, motherboard driver software CD which includes the integrated graphics card, sound card and LAN drivers, a 4 pin Molex 2 SATA power connector, PCI Express switch card and a motherboard manual. This board is based around the AMD 790GX Northbridge chipset and the AMD FB750 Southbridge chipset. It's socket AM2, AM2 Plus and AM3 compatible which means that with a simple BIOS update it will accept some of the newer chips like the Thenom 2 X4 that we're looking at today. With regards to the memory modules it takes either two 240 pin DDR2 memory modules which accepts speeds up to 533, 667, 800 and 1066 modules or it will accept two 240 pin DDR3 modules which accepts speeds of 1066 and 1333. It is expandable up to 4 gig in each of these. One of the first things that you'll notice about this board is the huge copper heatsink that helps cool the MOSFETs as well as the 790GX chipset. There is also a smaller copper heatsink which is helping cool the SB750 Southbridge chipset. This motherboard has two power connectors, one which is located here which is an 8 pin power connector and then also over here we have a 24 pin power connector. There are three fan headers based around the board, one is here for the CPU cooler fan, one is based down here for a system fan and also one tucked behind here for a system fan as well. We also have a IDE connector here, we have six serial ATA connectors and a floppy drive connector based up here. All of the front panel connectors and USB headers are based down here next to the system fan connector. Also we get the CMOS battery with the jumper which you'd normally expect as well as three buttons here which are more aimed for the hardcore overclocking market. We get a on off power button, a reset button and in between this a CMOS button. So instead of having to take this jumper off to reset CMOS you can just press that button there. This board has four PCI slots which is a standard legacy PCI slot. It has two PCI Express 2.0 16 times by 8 lane ports and it also has a PCI Express 1 times port. Once you've got the motherboard all set up, the first step to what you want to do is go into your BIOS and change some of the features, some of the functions that's going to appeal to the hardware that you've got plugged into the motherboard. To get into your BIOS, when the computer is turned on it will post and it will tell you that if you press the delete key it will take you into BIOS generally. By doing that you will then be greeted with this screen. Just going through some of the menus now we get the standard BIOS features, advanced BIOS features, advanced chipset features, integrated peripherals, power management features, miscellaneous control, PC health status, thermal throttling function, password settings, among the standard load, optimal defaults, standard defaults and to save your changes. One menu that is important to us is the power user overclock settings. In here this is where we can overclock our system CPU, memory, vCore voltages, anything like that. So we've got the ability to have the advanced clock calibration disabled, set to auto, all cores if you're running a dual, tri or quad core CPU like we are, or per core. We get the ability to change the FSB, the PCI clock, the SB reference clock, we can enable or disable the spread spectrum, change the multiplier of the CPU as well as the processor's voltage. We also get the ability for over voltage configuration where we can enable or disable the overdrive features. as well as changing the memory voltage, Northbridge core voltages and changing the memory speed. Straight away you can
can see that this motherboard is going to be perfect for people who don't want to spend a lot of money but they don't want to compromise features. It's got the integrated Radeon 3300 graphics, it's also got the integrated sound and gigabit LAN. So it's pretty much good to go straight out of the box. You've just got to put your CPU and your memory in. Uh, I'd say that this is going to be more aimed towards the home theatre PC market because it's got the passive cooling and it's quite a small board. You could put it straight into a home theatre PC case and, and off you go. Uh, if you are going to be using it for gaming or, or anything more than, than general desktop work, I'd say that then you're going to have to be looking at a dedicated graphics card, sound card, that kind of thing. But if you are just going to be using it for simple tasks or, or as a home theatre PC, just use the motherboard with, with the chip and the, and, and the memory and off you go. Because of the results that it gave, which I think is quite good for integrated um, graphics and integrated sound, it gave some good benchmarks um, from what we saw. So because of that, I'm going to give this 5 out of 5 stars.